In this video, we're going to lay the foundation for pretty much every program you're ever going to write. We're going to be talking about one of your most essential tools as a programmer, variables. Variables allow us to hold information. This means that we can create programs that react to what the user is telling them. A good example of this is a calculator. It takes some input, does something to it and spits out a result. So that's exactly what we're going to be making in this video. But first, this video is sponsored by Milanode. Milanode is a free tool for organizing your creative projects into freeform visual boards. It can be used for any creative project, but it's particularly well suited for the early stages of game development which we all know can get pretty overwhelming at times. Besides just updating their whole template workflow, Milanode is now also available for both Android and iOS. Having an organizational tool at your disposal at all times can be so useful, as you never know when the next idea for a project might strike. That's it. I'm genius. <laughs> The awesome part is that everything is synchronized with your desktop version, so no matter where you are, you can make sure that those great ideas aren't lost. If you want to have a look at Milanode in action, go check out our video where we used it to plan a turn-based battle system. And finally, Milanode is free, so get organized now by simply clicking the link in the description. Now you can think of a variable like a container. Variables essentially allow us to hold information. In other words, we can put stuff inside of that container. And at any point during our program, we can open the container and access the information. And we can do this to either change it or use it to do something with. A simple example of this would be if we want to write a program that takes in the name of our user. Here we would use a variable to store that name. Then later we can access this information and display it in the program whenever we want. However, one thing about variables that we need to understand is that they can have different types. The variable type indicates what type of information we want the variable to hold. If we go back to our container example, we can imagine the variable type as the shape of the container. If, for example, we have a round container, we can only put round information inside. Now, variables can have all kinds of types, but in C Sharp, we work with four fundamental data types. Number one, the integer or just int. This type can store a whole number. It can be positive or negative as long as it's a whole number. Number two, the float. This can store a decimal number. Again, it can be positive or negative, but this allows us to have decimals. This can of course also store whole numbers, but the integer is faster. So we use that unless we really need the decimals. Also, sometimes you want a very precise number and the flow can only hold up to seven digits. In this case, we would use a double instead. It's just like the float, but it can hold up to 16 digits. Number three, the string. This can store text. If, for example, we wanted to store the name of our user, we would do so using a string. Whenever we write quotation marks in our code, like we've done so far every time we've dealt with text, we're telling the program that this is a string. One thing to note is that we can fit both letters and numbers and all kinds of signs inside of a string, but it will always read it as text. It's not meant to store numbers like an integer or a float. And number four, the boolean or just bool. This can be either true or false. That's it. It's either one or the other. This is the simplest of the data types. So when we want to make a variable, the syntax is actually quite simple. We write the type of the variable, for example, int, followed by the name, let's call it user age, followed by an equal sign, and then whatever value we want it to have. And of course, a semicolon. Now, C Sharp actually allows us to cheat here and just write var instead of the data type. You'll sometimes see this when the programmer doesn't know beforehand what type the variable is going to be, or if just being lazy. In general, it's better practice to write the actual type. This is called being explicit and it helps us avoid making mistakes. But enough talking about it, let's try using variables to create something cool. So let's start out with the example we talked about where our program takes in the name of our user. To do this, we first need to have the program ask the user to input a name. So let's go console.writeline, what is your name? And then we create a variable. So on a new line here, I'm going to type string because a name is made up of text and strings are made to store text. We then follow that by the name of our variable. Let's just call it user name. The standard naming convention is to have the variable start with a non-capital letter and then have individual words separated with a capital one. So user name, and we can go ahead and set this equal to some name. And again, whenever we're working with strings, we want to put this inside of quotation marks. So we could just put in John here and then end it with a semicolon. However, we don't know the name beforehand. So instead of assigning our variable to John, we want to put here console.readLine. 
In other words, we are saying that we are creating a variable called username of type string and we are setting it equal to whatever the user types in. What we can then do is use this variable however we'd like. So underneath here, for example, we could go console.writeLine and have the program respond. And we could have it say something like, hello. And then here I'm going to go outside of the quotation marks and I'm going to add another word to this. So I'm going to use the plus sign to append a word and I'm going to put in the username. And then we can actually keep doing this so we can add on more strings here. So we can add on a plus again that goes comma nice to meet you. There we go. So you can see how we've constructed a sentence here where we first use a string called hello. We then input another string which is our username which is going to be equal to what is typed in and then we add comma nice to meet you. So if we run this program now, let's go run start debugging. The program asks us to put in a name. I'm going to put in Dwayne Johnson and indeed it says hello Dwayne Johnson. Nice to meet you. Awesome. So this is probably the most simple example of gathering some input from the user and then using it afterwards in our program. However, just displaying a name isn't very exciting. Let's instead try having the user input two numbers and then multiplying them and showing the result. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this code. And I'm actually going to start out by creating some variables. Now I'm going to make an integer here. That means a whole number and I'm going to call it number one. It's okay to have numerics inside of a variable name as long as you start with a letter. So this is totally fine. So number one, and we could go ahead and set this equal to some numbers, say five. However, we want the user to input this. So what we're going to do instead is actually not set it equal to anything. Just put a semicolon here. This is called declaring a variable because we're creating a variable, but we are not assigning it a value yet. And I'm actually going to do that for our second number as well. So let's create an int again. Let's call it num2 and just put a semicolon. As you can see, we're currently getting a yellow underline on these two variables. And that's because if we hover over them, it says that they're declared, but they're never used. So let's go ahead and use them. To do that, let's first prompt the user to input a number. So let's go console dot right. And I'm actually just going to type right here instead of right line. This way we can input a number on the same line that we're asking the user to do so. This looks a bit cleaner. We'll see that in a sec. So console dot right. And I'm going to tell the user to input a number and I'm going to put a space here. So there's a space between this line and the number that we're inputting and semicolon for that. And then we can set our number one. So our num one variable, we can set that equal to console dot read line, just as we did with our name. However, as you can see, this is giving us a red line. And if we hover over it, it says that it cannot implicitly convert type string to int. What this means is that whenever we read a line from the user, the user could really input anything on the keyboard. It could be signs, text or numbers. And so by default, when we read a line, it's of type string and our num1 variable is of type int. So we want to go ahead and convert from a string to an integer. And we can do that using the convert class. So before this line, I'm going to write convert. And as you can see, we can convert to a bunch of different types here. I'm going to use the to int. And again, there are some different versions here. And that's just because we can have integers of different bit lengths. So the standard sort of say is the 32 bit integer. And the only difference between these is how much memory they're taking up. And in other words, how large a number can they actually store? So in our case, we don't need to store incredibly large numbers. So 32 is going to be just fine. So I'm going to use two in 32. And then because this is a function, we need to open a parenthesis and we don't actually want to close it here. Instead, we want to input into this parenthesis here, console.readLine, because that's what we want to convert. And then we're going to close it over here. So in other words, what we're doing here is we're asking the user to type in a number. We're then saying, well, we want our number one to be equal to whatever we pass in. And then we make sure to use a convert function to convert that to an integer so that it fits with our variable type. I completely understand if that's a bit overwhelming. It was for me when I started out, but don't worry, you'll get the hang of it very soon. And before we move on to the second number, let's just try this out. So I'm going to hit F5 to start the program. As we can see, it asked me to input a number. I'm just going to put in 12 here and nothing visually happens, but we know that we are now storing this variable, this number 12 here in our number one variable. 
So let's go ahead and close this and let's do that for this second number as well so that we can multiply them together. So let's do console.write. We're going to say input a second number and then we're going to set num2 equal to convert dot 2 int 32 and the thing that we want to convert is console dot read line and as you can see we're doing the exact same thing here and here I'm just changing the variable number and so to multiply these two numbers let's go down here and let's create a third variable again int and this is going to store the result and we can simply set it equal to number one our first variable multiplied by number two our second variable and that's it, the computer is now going to multiply these two values. And we can show it just as easily by going console.writeLine and saying the result is, and then again we use the plus here to add the result onto this string. And if we run this now, we can type in a number, I'm going to put in 12. Let's type in a second number, I'm going to put in 5. And indeed the result is 60. Really, really cool. So we've actually now created a simple calculator. But currently this only works with whole numbers. If I were to run this program again and input say 1.5, it's going to throw us an error because 1.5 is not a whole number and we are using integers. So let's stop this program from running. And to fix this, we can simply change the type of our variables from int to say float to store a decimal number. Or if you want it to be really precise, we can use say double. Actually in our case, let's just do that. So let's change these two variable types to double. Instead of converting to an int 32, we want to convert to a double here. So we simply change this to convert to a double. And let's do that here as well. So two double. And then finally, the result as well. We also want that to be a double. And indeed, if we now run our program again, let's input a number, let's do 4.5. And a second number, let's do 2.5. And indeed, the result is 11.25. Awesome, so now we can actually do really accurate calculations with decimal numbers. And if we want to change this to say divide instead of multiply, we simply go into where we calculate the result here. And instead of inputting a multiply sign here, we use a slash for division. And again, if we run that, we can say divide 5 by 2 and the result is 2.5. Awesome. Now I of course want to give you a challenge to complete before the next video. This challenge is going to be to take the average of three numbers. See if you can do this in code by having the user input three different numbers, then the program can calculate the average and write it in the console. Remember that to find the average of three numbers, we first add them together. So number one plus number two plus number three. And then we take the result of this sum here and divide it by three. So we take the result of that and divide by three. That gives us the average. Of course, I'll make sure to post my answer to the challenge on the Brachys forum in case you want to have a look at how this can be done. There's of course a link for that in the description, but I recommend you try it out yourself first. So good luck and have fun. That's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss the next one. Also, don't forget to check out Millinode. Again, it's free and a great way to organize your projects. Simply click the link in the description to get started. On that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in May and especially thanks to Face Amerify, Lost to Violence, Love Forever, Replica Studios, Nobby Ninja, SRT Mike, Jason Urutescu, Leo Lissette, Piano Southern Luck, Donatine Gascoin, Dante Sam, Jacob Sanford, Naoki Wasaki, Mark Antoine Girard, Gregory Pierce, Michael Korobov, The Mighty Seuss, Owen Cooper, Elson the Fierce, Erasmus and Sirius Wolf. You guys rock!